current events. From the House Tops, coming up next. Advent Meditations from the Liturgical Year by Abbot Garanger. The Third Sunday of Advent. Nothing is more just than that we rejoice in the Lord. Both the prophet and the apostle excite us to desire the Savior. Both of them promise us peace. Isaiah chapter 26. In that day shall this canticle be sung in the land of Judah. Sion, the city of our strength, a Savior, a wall, and a bulwark shall be set therein. Open ye the gates, and let the just nation that keepeth the truth enter in. My soul hath desired thee in the night. Yea, and with my spirit within me, in the early morning, I will watch for thee. And St. Paul bids us rejoice in his letter to the Philippians, chapter 4. Brethren, rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Let your modesty be known to all men. The Lord is nigh. Be nothing solicitous, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your petitions be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore let us not be solicitous. The Lord is nigh, nigh to his church, and near to each of our souls. Who can be near so burning a fire, and yet be cold? Do we not feel that he is coming to us, in spite of all obstacles? He will let nothing be a barrier between himself and us, neither his own infinite high majesty, nor our exceeding lowliness, nor our many sins. Yet a little while, and he will be with us. Let us go out to meet him by these prayers and supplications and thanksgiving which the Apostle recommends to us. Let our zeal to unite ourselves with our Holy Mother, the Church, become now more than ever fervent. Now, every day, her prayers will increase in intense earnestness, and her longings after him, who is her light and her love, will grow more ardent. The Gospel is taken from the first chapter of St. John. At that time the Jews sent from Jerusalem priests and Levites to John to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed, and did not deny, and he confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he said, I am not. Art thou a prophet? And he answered, No. They said therefore unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. And they that were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said to him, Why then dost thou baptize, if thou be not Christ, nor Elias, nor a prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there has stood one in the midst of you, whom you know not, the same as he that shall come after me, who was preferred before me, the latchet of whose shoe I am not worthy to loose. These things were done in Bethania, beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. There hath stood one in the midst of you, whom you know not, says St. John the Baptist, to them that were sent by the Jews, so that our Lord may be near, he may even have come, and yet by some be not known. This Lamb of God is the Holy Precursor's consolation, He considers it a singular privilege to be the voice which cries out to men to prepare the way of the Redeemer. In this, St. John is the type of the Church, and of all such as seek Jesus. St. John is full of joy because the Savior has come, but the men around him are as indifferent as though they never expected nor wanted a Savior. This is the third week of Advent, and are all hearts excited by the great tidings told them by the Church? that the Messiah is near at hand? They that love him not as their Savior, do they fear him as their judge? Are the crooked ways being made straight and the hills being brought low? Are Christians seriously engaged in removing from their hearts the love of riches and the love of sensual pleasures? There is no time to lose, the Lord is nigh. If these words should come to the ears of those Christians who are in this state of sinful indifference, we encourage them to shake off their lethargy and render themselves worthy of the visit of the Divine Infant. Such a visit will bring them the greatest consolation here and give them confidence hereafter when our Lord will come to judge all mankind. Send thy grace, O Jesus, still more plentifully into their hearts. Compel them to go in, and permit not that it be said of the children of the Church 
As St. John said of the synagogue, There standeth in the midst of you one whom you know not. Heavenly Father, thou art preparing to set in the foundations of Sion a cornerstone that is tried and solid, and this stone, which is to give firmness to Sion, thy church, is thine incarnate Son. Again from Isaiah chapter 28, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will lay a stone in the foundations of Sion, a tried stone, a corner stone, a precious stone, and I will set judgment in weight, and justice in measure, and hail shall overturn the hope of falsehood, and waters shall overflow its protection, and your league with death shall be abolished, and your covenant with hell shall not stand. The coming of the Messiah was prefigured, as the Apostle assures us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, by that rock of the desert which yielded the abundant and saving stream that quenched the thirst of thy people. But now thou art about to give us the reality. It has already come down from heaven, and the hour is fast approaching when thou wilt lay it in the foundation. O sacred stone, which makes all one, and gives solidity to the whole structure, by thee it will come to pass that there shall be no longer Jew or Gentile, but all nations shall become one family. Men shall no more build on sand, nor set up houses which floods and storms may overturn. The church shall rise up from the stone which God now sets, and, secure on the great foundation, her summit shall touch the clouds. With all his weakness and all his fickleness, man will partake of thy immutability, O divine stone, if he will but lean on thee. Woe to him that rejects thee, for thou hast said, and thou art the eternal truth, Whosoever shall fall upon this stone shall be bruised, and upon whomsoever it shall fall, it shall grind him to powder. Matthew 21.44 From this twofold evil, O thou that art the chief cornerstone, deliver us, and never permit us to be of the number of those blind men who rejected thee. Give us grace ever to honor and love thee as the cause of our strength, and the one sole origin of our solidity. And since thou hast communicated this quality of the rock to one of thine apostles, and by him to his successors to the end of the world, grant us ever to cling to this rock, the Holy Roman Church, in union with which all the faithful on the face of the earth are preparing to celebrate the glorious solemnity of thy coming. O precious and tried stone, thou art coming, that thou mayest destroy the kingdom of falsehood and break the league which mankind hath made with death in hell. We continue with the prophet Isaiah, chapter 30. The Lord waiteth that he may have mercy on you, and therefore you shall be exalted, sparing you, because the Lord is the God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. For the people of Sion shall dwell in Jerusalem. Weeping thou shalt not weep, he will surely have pity on thee, and the voice of thy cry, as soon as he shall hear, he will answer thee. And are we then to weep no more, O Jesus? Happy we? How could we be sad now that thou hast heard our prayers, and our eyes shall behold thee, our master and our teacher? If you delay some days longer, it is only that we may have more time to receive what thou hast made it thy glory to give, mercy and the pardon of our sins. O oh, the happiness of thy kingdom! O oh, the richness of our lands, that is, of our souls, when thy dew shall have fallen upon them, O oh, the sweetness of our bread, which is to be thyself, O oh, living bread, come down from heaven. O oh, the brightness of the light, which thou wilt give us, even on the very day when thou wilt have bound up our wounds. Blessed day, come quickly. And thou, dear night, when Mary is to give her divine babe to us, when wilt thou come? So great is our hope in this thy merciful coming, that we listen with less dread to the awful words of thy prophet, who with a rapidity swift as thine own word passes over the long ages between the two events, and speaks to us of the approach of the terrible day, when thou wilt come suddenly in thy burning wrath, and with thy lips filled with indignation, and thy tongue as a devouring fire. Our present feeling is hope, for we are looking forward to that coming in which thou art the beautiful prince of peace and love, and we cannot but hope. When that last day comes, have mercy on us. But on this day of thine amiable visit, permit us to say to thee the words of one of thy servants, the venerable Peter of Sellos, in one of his Advent sermons. Yes, dear Jesus, come, come to us, but in swathing bands, 
not with thy hand raised to punish us, in humility, not in thy greatness, in the crib, not in the clouds of heaven, in the arms of thy mother, not on the throne of thy majesty, on the colt of an ass, not in the carabin, to us and not against us, to save us and not to judge, to visit us in thy peace, not to condemn us in thy anger. If thou comest thus, O Jesus, it is not from thee, but to thee, that we will fly. We'll be back with more from the housetops after this break. Wishing you, your family, and your loved ones a most special season of Advent, and especially Thanksgiving, to the Lord, to Our Lady of Perpetual Help, and to all those who have prayed and worked so hard to make WQPH our little local blessed radio station from your friends here at WQPH. This third week of Advent begins with Gaudete Sunday. Gaudete means rejoice. Gaudete in Domino, Semper in Terum, Dico Gaudete. That translates as rejoice in the Lord always, again I say rejoice. This is the week of the different color Advent candle and vestments. While you may be thinking it's pink, the actual color is rose to symbolize rejoicing in the closeness of Christmas. We're going to look at the genealogy of Jesus found at the beginning of Matthew's Gospel. And I know what you're thinking. What rejoicing is there in a long list of Old Testament figures, half of whom I've never heard of? Well, if we dig deeper, there is a few names that stand out. More specifically, five women. It's rare for women to be named in biblical genealogies. But what's even more odd is the first four listed. No mention of the well-known matriarchs like Sarah or Rachel, but rather some outsiders or damaged characters. Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, and Bathsheba. Tamar and Rahab are connected with prostitution. Ruth isn't even an Israelite, but rather from the kingdom of Moab. And Bathsheba was a Hittite and was either a victim of King David's lust or a willing adulterer. These characters are cause for rejoicing because they remind us that Jesus came into this world to save us, sinners with our damaged lives. Even some of the matriarchs of his own family were outsiders who had a shameful past. But with the love of God, we too can have hope. The final and fifth woman mentioned in Jesus' genealogy is herself a great cause for rejoicing. Mary, the mother of Jesus, unlike the other women mentioned, is the perfect matriarch, who will become our mother too because we are Christians. In this third week of Advent, let us rejoice in the Lord always, especially for our families, damaged as they may be, and also for Him giving us Mary as a perfect spiritual mother. This is Matt Maloney from KnowTheFaith.net. Okay, so you'll never guess who just dropped by our studio, your favorite priest, Father Bob Doherty. <laughs> Father Bob Doherty, do you have some well wishes and blessings for our listeners? Absolutely. Come, Holy Spirit. Come now. Come as you will. For all of us, life is a journey of love and pain. So we have to have Easter Sunday, but before that, we always have to do Good Friday. So for ourselves, we know that if we have confidence in God, God's all, nothing's going to overcome God. Not sin, not death, not the... Because the Son of God, the Lord Jesus, has given us eternal life. He's given us peace. So we know that life is not the problem. We all have problems. Some people have more than others. Life is not a problem to be solved. It's the mystery to be lived. The mystery of God's love. He loves an everlasting love for us. He loves us today. He loves us tomorrow. He loves us forever. It's hard to surrender all our problems over to God, but by surrendering the problems to God, we become more peaceful, more joyful, more hopeful that all is going to be well, all is well today, all will be well tomorrow, and all will be well forever. We ask, invoke the Holy Spirit to be with us, all your family, all your friends, especially those who are fragile, those in hospitals, nursing homes, those who are not feeling well, men the Regina, the average age is 88 years of age. So like there's one person, Father Mark Riley, 59, they call him a kid. Hey kid, what are you doing in here? So for ourselves, we know that God is good and we try to walk in the way of the Lord. Amen. Amen. What beautiful Thanksgiving and Christmas message you have given us that we can use all the time. So pray for Father Bob Doherty. He's not 88. 
he's, yet. He's, he's, he's probably <laughs> not yet. I'm 79. 79. He's just a, a pup. That's right. He's a, uh, one of the great priests in the Diocese of Boston. We've been happy to have him come on our pilgrimages, pastor of Sacred Heart Church, fabulous pastor. God bless you, Father, for all you have done for God. Keep up the great apostles. The great apostles are so important for people to understand that God is and God loves them. Amen. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. <laughs>
God the Son, who has given himself to us. God the Holy Spirit, who performed this mystery in the womb of Mary. And Mary herself, who so divinely cooperated with it. The more we study this great subject, the more the heart is inflamed with love, and we desire to live only for love of God, who has so loved us. By studying this mystery, we learn to judge wisely of all things, because we know the judgment and appreciation of Jesus Christ, infallible rules of the true. We learn to perform holily all things, because we have before our eyes the example of man-God, the adorable type of all that is holy. If we desire to adore God, we adore Him perfectly by uniting our homage to that of the Incarnate Word, who deifies them, and presenting them to His Father, covered with all the dignity of His person. If we wish to solicit graces, we lay our prayer in the heart of the Incarnate Word, who communicates to it the omnipotence of His intervention on the heart of God. Lastly, by studying this mystery, virtue appears therein so beautiful so ravishing that the heart attaches itself to it with delight and finds the practice of it as sweet as it is easy. For we say to ourselves, My God does not ask anything of me which he has not first done himself. Can I then complain and feel that he asks too much of me? Such are the precious advantages which the study of the mystery of the Incarnation presents. Have we profited by them up to the present time? Do we lovingly study it in the Gospels and in the writings of St. Paul? and in the other apostles, and in pious works which describe its beauty and magnificence. O divine wisdom, how strong you are in thus reaching thine ends by means which are infallible, though hidden, and yet how sweet, offering no constraint to man's free will, and how fatherly in providing for our necessities. You choose Bethlehem for thy birthplace, because Bethlehem signifies the house of bread, and this you teach us, that you are our bread, the nourishment and support of our life. With God as our food, we cannot die. O wisdom of the Father, living bread, that has descended from heaven, come speedily into us, that thus we may approach to thee and be enlightened by thy light and by that prudence which leads to salvation. On December 17th, the Church enters on the seven days which precede the Vigil of Christmas, 
and which are known in the traditional liturgy by the name Greater Ferias. Every day at Vespers is sung a solemn antiphon consisting of a fervent prayer to the Messiah, whom it addresses by one of the titles given him in the sacred scriptures. In the Roman Catholic Church, there are seven of these antiphons, one for each of the greater ferias. They are commonly called the O's of Advent because they all begin with that interjection. The first of these appeals to the incarnate word is O Wisdom, O Wisdom that proceeds from the mouth of the Most High, reaching from end to end mightily, and disposing all things sweetly, come and teach us the way of prudence. The gift shop at St. Benedict Center in Still River is a treasure chest of devotional items. True Devotionals specializes in a full line of traditional Catholic books and calendars. We also have rare and elegant religious gifts that promote a deep spiritual life, including the Center's own unique sterling silver True Devotion Ring. True Devotionals, 271 Still River Road, Still River, Massachusetts. Be sure to visit our website, truedevotionals.com. From the House Tops is produced by the slaves of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, Still River, Massachusetts.